Hello guys and welcome back. And look what arrived in the post yesterday. Guess what this is. This is a Mitsubishi Outlander Fave PHEV uh, AC charger, AC to DC charger and DC to DC charger for the 12 volt battery. It does both. And the fact that you're looking at this kind of indicates that I failed miserably at getting the Nissan Leaf Gen 1 uh, AC charger working. No, either it's faulty or I didn't plug it in right <laughs> or I didn't send the right control signals to it. One of those three. Either which way, this is significantly smaller, lighter and a much better shape to fit into my under my bonnet and I'm going to show you now how I intend to fit it. It's going to take a little bit of fiddling but <laughs> I'm very pleased. Well as you can see guys I have put some spray paint on my uh, frame for under the bonnet. What actually happened was this thing has been lying out right through the winter or for most of the winter anyway under the bonnet of the car but outside and it ended up very rusty so to try and stop that happening again I put some paint on it after spending about an hour rubbing down all the different bits that needed rubbed down. Okay so this is the unit we're talking about and it looks like it's going to be able to fit in Right in there. The cable's caught. Right in there. And then my inverter. The inverter can quite easily sit just above it. the inverter to sit down so I may have to jiggle this around a little bit. There you go. That's it settled. So yeah it's going to take a bit of fettling to try and get it into the right position and get uh, mounts made for it but that's the basics of where that's going to go. So we have Nissan Leaf inverter, Mitsubishi, uh, DC to DC and AC charger and Nissan Leaf motor. So that is brilliant that that fits quite so well. And then this inverter cable, um, which is currently trapped under the cage, and that will then just go straight up into here. I'm really pleased at how neat that is. This unit replaces the, the Nissan Leaf DC to DC um, converter and the Nissan Leaf charger which are two large units so this on its own replaces two large units uh, it does mean I don't have the Nissan Leaf high voltage junction box but I bought a box to do that and that can go there it's probably a little on the big side but um, I hope to put the Nissan Leaf junction the junction box out of the Nissan Leaf battery pack into this and I hope to put it in complete along with other high voltage connections. Guys, would you look at this? <laughs> I cannot believe it is a perfect fit. And that's just going to sit underneath the inverter, which means that the pipes, coolant pipes for the inverter and the and the motor and the, the this charger and DC to DC are right beside each other keeping everything nice and simple cannot believe it this uh, <laughs> you nearly think I'd made that frame specifically for this uh, charger but no it just luck is that it fits and it actually goes in 
and uses up the space which I kind of was hoping to use for this sort of thing but I never dreamt it would be as good a fit as this look all I did was drill a hole through there and a hole through there and the two lined up well I made them line up nicely but the uh, the distance between this rail and the other rail I think I had to I had to grind away about two millimetres or not even, about a millimetre of steel to get that to, to squeeze in there, <clears throat> which means it's lovely and tight. As you can see, there is no gap there. And if we go to the other side, uh, yep, in there, there is no gap there either. It was butting up against it as I was, um, well, just. I just put it in. All I had to do is literally use the grinder to take away a millimetre or so of steel, and that fitted perfectly. There's only the three mounting points, so but that's plenty. It's not that heavy, so three mounting points is enough. So brilliant. One more small step forward, uh, and another evening gone. <laughs> It's amazing. It took a whole evening just to get that to fit in there nicely like it is. I had to cut out, there was a, a bar like this going across and I had to cut that in half, take the top half off it just to let that drop down a little bit so that the bolt holes would line up. There's the, the bar there and it's actually supporting or from underneath. Uh, it's just touching but it's not touching the whole way across. So. That's a big step. I need to figure out which of these two is paws and which is an egg. At the moment, I don't know. Uh, I'm hoping somebody on the internet will be able to tell me. So that'll be the paws and egg, I think, for the high voltage coming in. I say that because it's orange, so orange denotes high voltage. So that'll be high voltage coming in. This will be the single phase. Um, AC voltage coming in there, I presume. One on is earth, the other one is well, there's a live or a neutral, but it doesn't. They're both orange. I don't think it matters which. But anyway, that's that. High voltage in or AC AC in, and I'm assuming that will be DC out. I don't really know. I haven't uh, tested yet, but I'm assuming because this is in a plastic surround. That would be 12 volts DC coming out, and I guess that'll any any ground will do. Just have to make it work now. <laughs> but I'm told it's very simple. I'm told there's a lot of people using these. They're very common in the world of EV conversions uh, because they're relatively well. I can see why. Very neat. Very very neat. Nice and square, so easy to mount, and um, yeah, compared to the Nissan stuff, <laughs> this is the king, uh, and for simplicity anyway. Right guys, well I know this all looks kind of dodgy, and it probably is, but it's working as a DC to DC charger, as that is. And this, <coughs> the um, Mitsubishi Outlander charger stroke DC to DC converter is working to charge the 12 volt battery. So I haven't yet got it uh, hooked up for AC charging yet, and that's going to be next. But I'll take you through what I've done just to get this working as a DC to DC con uh, charger or converter. So what we've got is um, down here there's a 13 pin plug which comes out of the Outlander char um, charger. <clears throat> the white wire goes off to the EVSE or the, um, the granny charger or granny plug and that's the proximity pilot I think it is or it's one, it's one of the two wires anyway that goes to the uh, over to the charge socket and that will tell the EVSE or the granny charger to turn on. Um, 
Yellow wire is power. Main 12 volts. Hello, Freddy. This is Freddy. <laughs> He's a good boy. Black wire is negative, zero volts. Green wire is the sense connector. So that needs to go directly to the 12 volts or the positive of the battery, preferably via a fuse, of course. Um, and that will tell the charger what the current voltage is of the battery so that it doesn't overcharge the battery. Um, the grey wire is... The grey wire is the sense wire. Grey wire is sense wire. So if the grey wire has 12 volts on it, the charger comes on. If it doesn't, it doesn't come on. These two wires are CAN and I haven't got them connected up yet. So the DC, high voltage DC goes in there and I have it connected at the moment just directly to the uh, the output of the um, contactors. This is the 12 volt DC or 14 volt to so the, the charge voltage anyway coming out of the AC to DC converter and I just have that linked at the moment through here to the, the, um, the main positive. So what will happen is when I turn on the switch here that will send the 350 volts from the battery straight through to the DC side of the charger. Uh, at the moment I don't have an inverter or anything else connected, I've only got this connected. So whenever I switch, turn it on, that will send our 350 volts onto the DC side of the charger. Sorry, I forgot to say that is the cable going out to the AC connection, but I haven't got that sorted yet. DC in here, and whenever I turn on this switch, that will enable the DC to DC charging. So let's reset our meter. And as you can see, the battery is currently at 13.9 volts. So if I turn this on, same two relays operate in the same way uh, to send the uh, voltage through. So that's the first relay and second relay. So that should be 350 volts now coming into the DC side. As you can see, we're still sitting here at 12.8 volts. But as soon as I flick this switch, it goes up to 14.4. And it's shoot, that's it, that's the full charging current voltage. So that's it, it's working. What I now need to do is to figure out how to get the AC side of it working. So that's going to be next.